Hi everybody. Okay, so we are on part two of our saltwater flower project that we've been working on. Last time we were together, we mixed our saltwater and flour. We turned it into fingerprints and handprints, and then we either baked it or we let it air dry. I didn't mention, and I forgot, and I'm sorry, that if you are going to bake it, I baked mine for two and a half hours on 200 degrees. I don't recommend you doing that unless your parents are involved. If your parents aren't involved, we just let it air dry. So I want to show you. My first one is finished. So excited. So I'm going to hold it up for you so that you can see. So I took my one that I made into a flower, and I painted it. As you can see, it's shiny. See that shimmer? But that's because I put a glaze on after I painted it. After it's all dry, I'm going to paint the back as well so that it is totally sealed. But I think it would be fun for everybody to write their names on the back. But I want to show you what I did before I started to paint. Before I started to paint, I outlined my impression with Sharpie marker. And then I wanted to make my handprint a little fancy, so I added polka dots inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint them. I'm using acrylic paints to paint. Acrylic paints look like this. You could get them in Liquitex, which these are called basics, or you can get them in these little bottles that someone could get for you at the craft store. So if you have these, these are great to use, except they don't come off your clothes. So if you're going to use them, make sure you have your apron on or some old type of shirt so that you don't get it all over you and make sure you roll up your sleeves. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bend the camera down so that you can see the table a little clearer, okay? And hopefully, there you go. See, here I am. Hi. Okay. So this is the one that I had just done that's already painted, but I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to put this one in its place. And you can see it just perfectly. Now, when I look for a paintbrush, I try to find one that matches the size. So this is a small brush for a small circle. And I think I want to make this, wait a minute, I didn't add any red. I'm going to add a little bit of red to my palette. When I, my palette is aluminum foil. So you can just use a sheet of aluminum foil. And I'm going to dip in the red and I'm going to make this circle red. See how slow I'm going? I really want to take my time because I want to be sure that I can still see that black line. And then I'm going to clean my brush. I dry it on my apron, which is fine. And I'm going to pick a new color for another polka dot, still sticking with my small brush. And I think you get the idea. I really wanted to add colors that I thought would be nice for Mother's Day because I, I'm going to give this one to my mom because I really think that my mom, even though I'm a grown up, I think she would love to get a handprint present from me. Why not, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this the colors that I think my mom, my mama would like. But we can't tell her because it's a surprise. She doesn't know. Okay. And she's not going to know because she lives in Florida and I have to mail it to her. So she's going to get it late anyway. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to make this one yellow. And then I want a light yellow, so I'm going to mix some white in with my yellow. And I'm going to make this, this one down here a bigger one, but it's a different shade of yellow. Because I like to mix my colors sometimes so that I can get a variety of choices in there. There we go. And then... I don't have green, so I'm going to mix some green. I'm going to take my blue and what other color? Blue and what make green? Yellow. That's right. Blue and yellow make green. So I'm going to go ahead and make my green. Ooh, that's a, pre that's a pretty green. I made a pretty green. And then I'm going to take my green that I just made and I'm going to add white to it. <gasps> and now it's, it's a lighter green. Check that out. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Now I'm trying to go a little quick so that you guys can see. There we go. So I'm gonna hold this up so that you get a good idea of what my handprint looks like, see? Now I think I wanna make my hand a solid color. I think I'm gonna do all white in the hand and then a black background. 
So I'm gonna take a brush that's a little bigger and I'm gonna get some fresh white because my, my white on my palette is a little dirty. <laughs> Sorry, it's the paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint in my hand. When I go around my shapes, right, my circles, I really wanna take my time. If you go over the black lines, that's not a big deal. You can always um, get your Sharpie marker back out when this is done and go over your black lines again, but you have to do it before you put the Mod Podge on, okay? You can't you can't do Sharpie after, well, you could do Sharpie after Mod Podge, but it's not gonna look as good. So you wanna do the Sharpie before you do the Mod Podge. Mod Podge is what makes it shiny, and I'll show you what that bottle looks like in case I haven't done that already. I'm just trying to go a little quick here for you so that you can have a good idea of how important it is when you're making a project like this because when you bake these you can see it almost looks like bread right because it's salt flour water so you could keep it the bread color and just put the clear varnish on top but I think it's kind of fun to paint these and I what I think is even more fun about painting them is they're bumpy so it's kind of cool to like figure out how to paint something super bumpy so there you go there's my white. See how I went over some of those black lines? I'm not worried about that at all. I'm not worried about that at all because I'm going to go right back over them anyway. And now my background, I want to do my background black on this one because I want my handprint to be the most important thing on this uh, clay sculpture. Now, some people have asked me, well, Mrs. Jones, if you drop this, will it break? I'm not sure. I think it could at the very least crack. So I'm going to say treat it like you would treat a plate or um, a mug or something that's ceramic and pretend that if you drop it, it could really break. So it's nothing to play with, you know. So boys, don't don't try to play a game with this. Don't throw it to a friend because I can't guarantee that it will still be in one piece. I've never tried to break this, so I don't know how hard it would be. I guess maybe that's something I could see. So you start to see how my handprint's starting to show. And it doesn't take long to paint these at all, just takes a few minutes. And they're really fun to do. I What I really love about painting these is how bumpy the, uh, the sculpture is because it makes it challenging to paint, but it also makes me feel like I'm I'm really painting a sculpture. A lot of times when we work with um, salt flour and water, or not, when we work with paper, not salt flour and water, when we just work with paper, that's great, but you know, it gets boring after a while. So it's more fun to build stuff sometimes. Sometimes I love to build stuff, sometimes I like to just paint. Depends on how big of a mess I wanna make. So I'm almost done, guys. Bear with me, and I'll just go here. And I still have a little bit down here at the bottom. Okay, and there you go. Now when this completely dries, I can take my Mod Podge, which is this, see that Mod Podge? That's a glaze. That's what's gonna give it the shine like this one has. Very shiny. And it also seals it. But like I said, you don't want to use these. You don't want to put food or anything like that on these because Mod Podge isn't good for food, right? You can smell Mod Podge. You know Mod Podge is Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Yep. Mod Podge is not good for food because it's got a smell to it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let this dry. And once it dries, I'm going to go ahead and put my clear glaze on it. And then I can give it away. But before I do that, I want to make sure I sign the back. You can use a Sharpie marker for that. Crayola markers probably wouldn't be a good idea. So if you have a Sharpie, use a Sharpie. Well, I hope you really liked this video and I hope you liked this project. I think it was a lot of fun. Bye guys. And I hope everybody out there has a really great Mother's Day, Spring, Memorial Day, and all the stuff that's coming up. Things are going to get better. Bye.